Hello viewers, SuperGT here. Welcome back to another episode of trying to beat the fastest car. Now this is a very common occurrence that any given track, any given class will have a dominant car. And in group three around Brands Hatch, and well around most tracks actually, the Audi R8 is the car to beat. So the main objective here really is just to try to beat as many Audi R8s as possible in a different car and first up is the Porsche 911 it's sort of for me the de facto standard car in group 3 it's the car I normally retreat to if I want a safe car to use because normally using the Audi R8 for those of you who have driven it which I'm presuming is a lot of you we all know that it's, it's, a, it's a strange car to drive you kind of have to go full Tokyo Drift to get it to really work and it's not a style that I'm really used to and therefore I kind of try to not use it if, if possible. This time around going for the 911 as I say, let's see how many of these R8s we can beat around Brands Hatch. Not an easy circuit to overtake around, it is quite a tight and twisty circuit. I mean this section back here is quite flowing but again there's not really any massive breaking points, it's quite difficult. Right on the back of this guy and he spins it round, goes full send to the Shadow Realm and you can never quite say exactly why he's done that but I'm presuming because I was very close to him there's always a chance that it was partially because of the pressure the Super DT pressure cauldron burning him down into a spin so we move up into third that is one of the R8s eliminated we can go about doing that once a lap then we'll be good now through the very fast corner of Sheen, and you do have to cut that turn, but obviously not that much, get myself a half a second penalty, one lap later, yes that was a skip ahead, we, we served the penalty but still managed to uh, keep in third place, still around just under two seconds behind the guys ahead who are quite intently battling over the lead, and I have an Audi R8 behind, so this is an interesting point of the race where I really just need to get my head down and really work towards getting on terms with the guys in front before the guy behind gets onto terms with me. So through the Druid's hair, been back down the hill. As we fast forward to lap number four, the battle for the lead still raging on. The guy in second right on the tail of the leader, but not for much longer as he goes for the self-send once again. So plenty of self-sending going on here as we move up into second place, courtesy not really of any overtakes but the two guys in the Audi R8 just deciding that they don't really want to stay on the tarmac much longer and uh, send themselves off onto the grass. So the 911 there, performing quite well, we'll go again see if we can uh, beat the cars ahead, this time a Ford GT quite interestingly and I'm not sure that is really the best choice for, uh, for Brands Hatch in Group 3 that thing's very good in a straight line, but I mean this straight here is the only real straight that you can really make any use of that power. Up the inside we go into Westfield, get the job done. Not normally a move I'd go for, but around a track like this you just need to make every move count. So I've just gone fully up the inside, Dan Ricardo style, up into second place. And already the pole sitter in the R8, a long way ahead, 1.7 seconds, it's very difficult to catch up when you're this far back against the pole sitter who's presumably faster than you are because they qualified ahead and they have technically the fastest car and a big gap in the end yeah it proved quite a conclusive second place so quite a list of R8s being beaten there but a stern warning everyone punts Super GT I bloody hope not but we'll find out in this race as we begin race number three so again the full GT just ahead but this time an additional Audi R8 there in second the Italian full GT looking for the move up the inside a bit of contact looking around the outside always going to be a difficult move and it doesn't quite materialize is it possible here no not quite so just really just tucking into the slipstream as best we can as we're under under attack from behind number 95 going very wide and he leaves a space uh, well open well and truly opens the door and I take the invitation as does the Croatian guy behind, we both go through 
into third and fourth and the Italian there just dropping down the order from second down to seventh already so he's had a colossal downfall on lap one can I go about getting perhaps another second place here because the leader which is absolutely bolted there's no chance I don't think of catching up with him unless he really goes for a self send at some point around the lap so full GT up ahead and an Audi R8 behind although that, uh, that full GT is not going to be ahead for long as he just uh, dips two wheels onto the grass sends him round that was a half send to the Shadow Realm but the the driver there just managing to recover in time to recover to fourth place and not the realm of shadows so a very, very deep line into turn one not really what i want you want to try to break away as quickly as possible from the group behind ideally out of that slipstream range of the magic 0.8 seconds i've only managed just under 0.8 seconds at this exact point here so not quite enough to get away from that group a little bit later into the race end of lap two now driver in the Audi R8 definitely firmly in that slipstream as there's no chance of victory once again that guy in the lead just pulling away quite comfortably unless I reel in two seconds of lap at this point it's not going to happen though I'm going to go semi-defensive into turn one and try to meet that apex there we go more than the apex in fact do we have to go defensive up the hill not quite I don't think you can go for a lunge from that far back so this is very much a defensive race. The, the tide of the race very much changed from going from going in, on the attack to now. There's no chance of attacking because the lead is so far ahead. It's a defensive race from here to the end. Can I just hold off this R8? Slightly different challenge. It's always hard once someone who is quick in a good car is in your slipstream. It's very difficult. You, you've, got, you've got a job on your hands to keep the position that you're in. Luckily for me, as we've mentioned, Brands Hatch, quite an easy track to defend against if you can just drive moderately well. Obviously, if you start making mistakes, then you're going to give your opponent some invitations to go up the inside. But if you can just drive moderately okay, it is quite difficult to really overtake around here. The best opportunity being into turn one, I'd say, and then the preceding, also the, the next corner after that, the uh, Druid's Hairpin at the top of the hill. Into the final corner, so a crucial corner this one, because you want to get away as much as you can onto the main straight, leading up to the two best overtaking opportunities. And he is there, he is close, three tenths of a second, not close enough to go for a lunge, unless it was an absolute do or die mega send. He doesn't quite think about doing that though, he's very close, I'm going to go to the, fully to the right hand side, fully defensive, no messing around, keep the position. Just shows you, once the, once the driver is behind, they are very close within striking range you can just send it on the inside there's not much they can do they're not going to be able to go around the whole outside of a very tight hair but it's just almost impossible to do and with two laps to go the pressure is building here will i be able to keep this position moving over to the left hand side early to try to break that toe to come down the dip and up into hawthorne bend fast sweeping right hand also fast sweeping right hand just uh, characterizes Characterise this section of the circuit. Another one here, Westfield Bend, out very early to the outside, and you can take plenty of the excess curb on the outside. Sheen curve, very difficult to get right, very easy to go wide on the left hand side. And then finally, we have a bit of respite with a left hander of Sterling's up towards the final corner. And again, see just how close he is as we come up to the final lap. He is within a quarter of a second. Once someone's within a quarter of a second, they're, they're pretty much right on you. And you can see it on the radar, he is on my tail. So going fully defensive here, he, he's going to wait to go to the left-hand side. He's almost going to pull a David Peril move off on me by swinging back to the inside. He doesn't quite manage to pull it off though, as I just still kind of covered it off. And it's a very difficult corner to overtake on if the, po the opponent ahead of you is covering most of the turn off. So the, the main danger really, of course, when you go to the inside, the main danger is that the driver behind gets a cutback. So you always have to be wary about that. Perhaps just park it on the apex to really eliminate that threat. They go really wide there, really too deep on the brakes. And there are marbles there which do seem to affect your car. And that's once again brought him back into contention as we go down this back straight, right on my tail. I am going to take the racing line, and I still don't think he's quite close enough to go for a full lunge there. 
as it is quite a brave place to go for a lunge. Again, having to go defensive, this race is really on now. Parking on the apex, and he can't quite do anything about that. So this race is really just absolute full defence. There's no attacking going on really at all. Bringing up my A game for defending right on the edge of what's allowed, but I think it's just about fine. As we come up to the final corner, I just have to make sure I get this one right. He is six tenths of a second behind at this point here, so it should be okay. As long as I don't do anything very silly. And we've got through the corner fine. Very, very, very good race that between the two of us. And I think we both played just within the rules, and it was a good, good very good battle. Um, and ble uh, beating plenty of Audi R8s, apart from obviously the leader of the race, to finish eventually in second place. So we're going to move to a different car now, the BMW M6 GT3, the big boy. Now with the recent update 1.39, the cars do handle slightly differently and I felt like we'll try out something different, something that uh, something I haven't really used too much before and that's the BMW M6. And actually I think it is a decent car, it's just a little bit uh, leery on the corner exit so you do have to watch out for that. But if we can get that under control, I think it's a very good car to use around here. In fact, my first qualifying lap, or my first practice lap in this car was actually quite good. And not too far off from my record from the Porsche. So that boded well for this race. But coming out of here, you see already that kind of just proves to you just how dangerous this car can be. As I almost lose it, I almost send myself to the realm. But just managed to control the car in time before that delivery get sent so on the exit of turn number four certes onto the back straight crucial corner of that as we lead out onto a long straight and just trying to keep into the toe of the guys ahead once again it's a familiar story with the guy in the lead he's just pulling away very very quickly indeed but second place is still on so we can still beat as many of these r8s as i possibly can obviously qualifying very important if you can just qualify at the front you can control the race from the front it's a lot easier so qualifying crucial my, my lap was average hence uh, qualifying normally third to fifth kind of area this guy goes very defensive move out to the left hand side and this is the cutback I'm talking about he goes very narrow he's going to pay for that on the exit as I can get a slightly better run on the way out and therefore up into turn number two get the job done so that's why turn one and two I think are the best overtaking opportunities because you can force someone out of position at turn one and they go for the move at turn two or just go for the move at turn one. So there's, there's sort of multi-layered um, availability of overtaking going into those couple of corners as we eventually get the job done at turn two. Up to third, we can turn our attention to number 95. So he had the massive colossal downfall from Grace on the previous race, going from second to seventh in basically one corner. So we can see if that's gonna repeat itself. So this is a very important part of the race, this. Where you go past someone, you just really need to make sure that you try to attack and go forward rather than make a mistake and therefore have to start defending from the guy behind. As soon as you have to start defending your position from the person behind, you're just going to lose time and you just lose the chance to, to attack the person in front. So it's quite a crucial stage of the race, this. As I'm now in the slipstream range, so I should be able to catch up and go for a move. He's made a very big mistake there through the Hawthorne bend and that's put me firmly within the prime suck zone now so he's not really got much chance of trying to shake me off unless he shakes himself off by going flying off the circuit as he almost does there you see the two wheels just grazing the grass kicking up a little bit of dust but the send wasn't quite on as he stays on the circuit look into the inside the m6 good power down this back straight into the final turn not quite enough of an overlap and it gets a little bit awkward between the two of us Audi R8 behind the Croatian driver, very, very close indeed. So quite an interesting situation. I'm in an R8 sandwich at this point here. Could go forwards, could go backwards. Or could say the same, I suppose. Those are all three possibilities as we come up the hill into, into Druids. Making that money rain down for R4M Motorsports. Ram for money, out in fours, although obviously a mistake. So I'm going to back off, let this guy go back off and let him go back into the position he wasn't, well, he wasn't he, he wasn't in third. I'm going to try to let him go back in front of me at least. But he doesn't take the invitation. I was backing off the throttle there. 
and he didn't really want to go back past and he's made a massive mistake he's gone back down to 7th or 8th now so he seems to have some sort of hatred for that corner seems to be making a mistake but I, I wanted to let him go back past but didn't quite take the invitation so an interesting race there going from 4th to 3rd perhaps really should have been a 2nd but it was 3rd that's how, that's how it went now this race was quite interesting you see there on the grid in the top 6 6 different cars and I think with this recent update people are quite happy to try out different cars and, and that's good to see because often you see in group three group four especially and group two i suppose well, and group one most classes to be honest there's always a dominant car so it's always good to see people using a range of different cars so we've got the ferrari the sls the bmw here of course 911 a huracan and i think an r8 so six different cars in the top six Good variety let's see if we can make for a good race starting third up behind our bulgarian friend once again and we've got the italian repping the ferrari in the lead so early early doors in the race just trying to settle into the race and try to eventually get on the attack in the slipstream range of the guy ahead and almost breaking out of the slipstream range of the guy behind which is always good news so into the fast sweeping corners at the back of the circuit and coming downhill here you can see right on his tail and when someone is right on your tail like this it is off-putting and we saw that in the first race I've made someone pretty much spin themselves out because of how off-putting it is to have something right on your tail it's very hard just to not notice especially a BMW M6 which is basically the size of planet earth has gone through the final corner onto the main straight the Italian in the Ferrari making a bit of a bolt there making a a nice gap, seven tenths of a second to second. Not quite close enough here to go for a move into turn one against the Mercedes, although he doesn't take the best of lines. And there, we go for the alien technology pullback. So a, a new technique I've developed where you can kind of just pull the person ahead backwards by 10 metres, and it seems to have worked as we've gone for the cutback on the way out of the turn. Get the job done up into second, and it gets a little bit messy in the group behind which is always good news I'm always quite happy to look behind to see an explosion of any sort and see everyone just um, murdering each other across the circuit so the gap behind up to a second gap ahead up to 1.7 but still with three and a half laps left to go we can still certainly catch up but this is a sad tale of another self-send and it happens far too often um, well I mean once is too often for this guy and he's just sent, sent himself firmly into the, into the barrier. And it's just a really sad tale of being in the lead. And for no reason at all, you're comfortable, but then you just send yourself into the barrier. It's embarrassing, we've all been there. But look at this, the guy in second, Bottle GT. Is he, is he trying to tell me what to do? Is that an order? Is that an instruction? Because by, uh, by lap five, by this point of the race, it was getting a little bit close and he was driving the Audi R8 so there's a little bit of pressure there knowing that he's in a solid car, he's in a good car and he is gaining, the gap was about two seconds, by this point here it's below one second. So Bottle GT trying to catch up, trying to order me to make a self-send mistake. I think the self-send is a good theme of this video, it seems to be happening a fair amount of times but I'm not going to fall for it, I'm going to complete this race I come through for a victory in the BMW M6. A good stuff there. That's a good, uh, good little battle there. As we win the race from third, a good batch of 911s there from third to fifth, and the Italian recovers to seventh. But there we go. That's the end of the video. Let me know your thoughts as always. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for the support on the channel recently and just in general. Much love as always, everyone. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Yeah.